Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Tuesday, December 13th. Tesla has launched Steam integration inside its Model S and X electric cars, with thousands of games now playable. Over the last few years, Tesla has been investing heavily into integrated video games into their car entertainment system. The system is integrated and connects directly to two touchscreens inside the Model S and X to play games, watch entertainment, and, of course, perform car functions. The automaker believes that with the advent of self-driving, entertainment, including video games, will become more important inside of vehicles. As a matter of fact, Tesla has a team of software engineers working on video games in Seattle and more recently started building a similar team in Austin, Texas. Tesla has released a video of a Tesla semi-electric truck getting tested for reliability and durability just as customers are starting to receive delivery. At the Tesla semi-delivery event last month, the company unveiled the production version of its first Class 8 truck, and for the most part, Tesla delivered on promises they made a few years ago. However, there were a few unknowns. One of them is how durable it will be, and it's a pretty big deal because in the trucking industry, trucks are amortized over their entire life. But now, Tesla has decided to share a new video of its semi being tested, and it gives a glimpse into the expected longevity. Some of the footage appears to be a few years old from when Tesla tested the original semi prototype in Alaska. The rest of it seems pretty current, though. Tesla is delivering the truck to customers, but only for a handful of longtime reservation holders close to the company. The warranty details haven't leaked, nor do we have a whole lot of data on longevity, but of course, how could you because it's so doggone new? Tesla has started to push a new software update that is known as its Holiday Update. Every year around the holidays, Tesla is known to push a bigger software update with features that are usually about more than fun instead of functionality. Today, Tesla has started pushing just such an update, and the headline feature is integration of Apple Music. After that, Tesla has added Mahjong into the game section, and also update to Dog Mode, which enables owners to leave their dogs in the vehicle with climate control continuing to go. Tesla has also updated the light show, and some quality of life improvements to fan speed, phone transfers, and some media controls. Tesla opening its supercharger network to non-Tesla electric vehicles is creating a strange problem that results in making some charging stalls useless. Tesla charger pylons have one cord that extends to the vehicle, and since all Teslas charge on the rear driver's side, most every pylon connects to the car on its right side. Well, other vehicles having a variety of charger locations causes them to use the Tesla pylon connected to the left side. The result is that a middle parking spot can be left without a charging option. The inconsistencies between charge ports on all different models are something that Tesla never really had to adapt to with their supercharger network growth. Other charging networks, like Electrify America, sometimes install in the middle of parking stalls, and sometimes they even have two cables to allow them to use on either side of the vehicle. It seems that Tesla is already aware of the situation because they're working on a new generation of its charging stations, Supercharger version 4, which appears to have a longer cable. Considering Tesla has over 40,000 superchargers around the world, it leaves us to wonder if they will be addressed or not. Tesla has started to deliver the refreshed Model S and X to customers in Europe, resulting in roughly two years without deliveries for their flagship models in the region. The automaker shut down the Model S and X production in January of 2021 to update the two models. Tesla kept taking orders, but production was delayed with the new refreshed Model S, starting to be delivered in the USA in June of 21 and the Model X in October. European markets were not so lucky, as Tesla took the rare decision to stop taking orders outside of North America last December. Tesla opened up orders again just this last August, and now those orders are starting to be delivered. Ford Motor Company has added a third shift at their Detroit assembly plant, where the F-150 Lightning electric truck is being produced, and they're looking to raise the output, obviously. Ford initially planned to build a second facility near its Rouge facility in Dearborn, Michigan, to produce around 40,000 Lightning EVs annually. However, the overwhelming early demand pushed Ford to expand their existing factory by about 78,000 square feet. The automaker looks to raise output yet again as the competition in the EV market continues to grow. 
Ford said that it added a third shift to its Rouge Electric Vehicle Center, adding roughly 250 employees. Ford's facility is now running seven days a week with crews alternating 10-hour shifts. Lucid Group and Panasonic Energy announced that they have entered into a multi-year agreement that entail Panasonic supplying lithium-ion batteries to both the Lucid Air and Gravity SUV. Part of the agreement supports Panasonic Energy's plans to expand outside of Japan and begin production at a new facility in the USA. Lucid's EVs will receive batteries manufactured by Panasonic from their current footprint in Japan, at least for now. Future cells will come from the energy company's upcoming facility in Kansas, which actually just broke ground in November. It's there that the company intends to further ramp up 2170 cell production and support its Japanese facility in developing and producing 4680 cells, of course, to be used by Tesla. Panasonic doesn't expect to begin mass production in the U.S. until 2025, but when it's complete, the company is anticipating an annual total production capacity of 30 gigawatt hours. Battery monitoring company Recurrent has released data on electric vehicle range loss during winter conditions. Between freezing and 70 degree temperatures, there can be a dramatic change of 30% or minimal at 3%. And we happen to know which models suffer the most. I'll just go ahead and list them because there's only 13 vehicles that have been tested. Some of the data is with verified loss and others use estimated numbers based on onboard telematics over 7,000 vehicles. So here they are. The clear winner is the Jaguar I-PACE with a 3% range loss, then the Audi e-tron in second place with 8%, a big jump up to the Tesla Model Y in third at 18% loss, then the Hyundai Kona and the Tesla Model X both at 19% loss, and the Nissan Leaf rests at 21% loss, the Model 3 at 22%, then the Volkswagen e-Golf lost 23%, and the BMW i3 and Mustang Mach-E both did 24% loss. The Tesla Model S lost 25%, and coming in last place is the Volkswagen ID.4, with a 30% loss in freezing temperatures. Ouch. In today's community comment found on YouTube, SingleSpeed says, I think the opinion of Tesla has changed for a lot of the people because they are priced out of the market. There is no hope that Tesla will be bringing a low-price EV to the market anytime soon, So people are moving on with their lives, slash, to other interests. Yes, single speed, that's a pretty good point. It's exactly what happened to me. When I went prowling around for a modern electric car in this last year, I didn't consider Tesla for very long because they were simply too expensive. Used ones were going for insane prices, and new ones had a year-long wait time, didn't qualify for the tax credit, and the base models were higher than the luxury trims of other EVs. So... For a good 10 years, I've wanted a Tesla, but that goal still stands. Life goes on, kids have to get to school, and I can't take them on a bicycle forever. As much as I wish I could. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I'm going to have some chicken noodle soup.